industries, some case studies. Iron and steel is very important in our modern day life as it forms the backbone of industrialization. It is largely used in bridges, highways, dams and in making machines and tools. Industrialization has followed different patterns in different parts of the world. Some countries like Britain and Germany have progressed more than other countries because of more natural resources and trained manpower at their disposal. Some countries have attained less progress because they have not been able to take maximum advantage of natural resources as they lack in trained workforce. Certain countries have progressed and prospered admirably because they have been able to make up for the lack of natural resources by developing skills and technologies. In this lesson, we will analyze these aspects by looking at key areas of development in three countries. USA, India and Japan Iron and Steel Industry, Jamshedpur, India Jamshedpur is a well-known industrial town which was a small village called Sakchi till 1907 when Jamshedji Tata selected this site to set up a steel plant. The availability of raw materials required for setting up a steel plant in the most important element that determines its location. Because of this, he chose this location as the raw materials and finished goods were heavy and so the location had to be in close proximity to the available raw materials. The art of smelting iron ore was known to Indians from ancient times. The iron pillar situated near Kutub Minar, believed to be more than 1500 years old, bears testimony to this fact. Jamshedi Tata made a new beginning by setting up a modern industry, the largest integrated iron and steel plant of India. Production of pig iron started in this plant in the year 1911 and steel production started in 1912. This is the largest private sector industry known as Tata Iron and Steel Company, Disco. It has many locational advantages. The plant is located near the confluence of two rivers, the Subarnarekha and Kharkai, which supply enough water for washing and flushing. High quality iron ore, hematite, comes from the mining areas of Singhpum in Jharkhand and Mayurbhanj of Odisha. Good quality cooking coal is brought from the Jharia mines in Jharkhand and Rani Ganj in West Bengal. Limestone comes from Gangpur and Sundarkar district of Odisha. All these mines are within the radius of 200 kilometers of Jamshedpur. Manganese comes from Jamshedpur and Kionichar district of Odisha. Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal and Odisha, all these states being densely populated, provide cheap and abundant labor. Kolkata has a port on River Hooghly which helps in export and import of goods as it is only 200 kilometers away from Jamshedpur. Jamshedpur is also connected to Kolkata by a railway line. Presently, Jamshedpur has become a big industrial center where railway locomotive, automobiles and agricultural machinery are manufactured. Iron and Steel Industry, Detroit, USA Detroit in USA is a major iron and steel production center of the world. The factors which make Jamshedpur a leading center of iron and steel in India are the same in case of Detroit. It also has a large domestic and foreign market, availability of good iron ore, coking coal, water, adequate facilities of power and proper connectivity through modern means of transport and communication. Detroit is a major automobile center of USA and is known in the world for automobile production. Most of the major automobile manufacturers, Ford, General Motors and Chrysler have established their factories in Detroit. USA occupies the leading position in iron and steel industry in the world. Detroit has also developed industrial complexes of iron and steel and allied industries. Several other industries have developed at Detroit which produce a variety of goods like computers, refrigerators, bulldozers, harvesters, tanks, guns and radars. 
It also produces different components required in the manufacturing of cars like tires, paints, batteries, nuts and bolts, etc. So, Detroit may be regarded as a major industrial cluster of USA. The growth of the iron and steel industry and its importance in becoming a major industrial cluster is mainly due to its locational advantage. Trivia Tata Steel introduced an 8-hour workday as early as in 1912 when only a 12-hour workday was the legal requirement in Britain. It introduced leave with pay in 1920, a practice that became legally binding upon employers in India only in 1945. Coal is brought from the North Appalachian coal fields. It is located at the western edge of Lake Erie and therefore cheap transportation through St. Lawrence Seaway is possible. Water for washing and flushing at the blast furnace is available from Lake Erie. The industry sources skilled and unskilled labor from the densely populated northern and northeastern part of USA. Detroit is very well connected to the rest of USA through roads, railways and highways. Heavy machinery, machine tools, etc. are supplied to the west coast regions of San Francisco in the southwest of the country. Iron ore is transported through the same system from Lake Superior area. Ample power is available for the automobile industry and other power plants from power grid of the world-famous Niagara Waterfalls. The hydroelectric power generated here provides a clean and unending supply of power. All these factors have created a highly industrialized region in USA, which is almost on the same lines of development as Jamshedpur in India. But, Iron and steel industry in Detroit is facing some problems. There is a shortage of the supply of good quality iron ore in the Lake Superior region. This industry has to depend upon imports of good quality iron ore, which is going to affect the working of steel plants. Even the automobile industry is facing stiff competition from Japan and other European countries. This is going to affect economic base of Detroit. Comparison of textile industry in India and Japan Ahmedabad, India The modern textile industry in India emerged in the beginning of 19th century but the cotton textile industry as such was firmly rooted in India much before that. India had very fine craftsmen and its cotton industry was highly developed. Very fine fabric was prepared on the hand looms of the Indian weavers. The muslin cloth of Dhaka and calicos of Calicut were famous all over the world. However, the cottage industry could not compete with modern machinery industry because of its low cost and large-scale production. The modern cotton textile industry began in 1818 when the first cotton textile mill was set up near Kolkata. This mill could not survive and the real beginning was made in 1854 when a cotton mill was set up in Bombay, now Mumbai. Today, Mumbai has a large number of cotton mills and is known as Cotton Polis of India. Ahmedabad is the second leading cotton producer in India. Mumbai and Ahmedabad are now compared to the twin cities of Liverpool and Manchester in England. At present, we can see a decided shift of cotton manufacturing from Mumbai to Ahmedabad. At Ahmedabad, the size of cotton mills are small, but they are known for high-quality goods. The reason for the localization of the cotton manufacturing industry at Ahmedabad are given here. The region has a humid climate that is an added advantage for spinning and weaving mills as the humidity of the region does not allow the yarn to snap. Gujarat and Maharashtra are very densely populated regions of Western India. Ample labor, both skilled and unskilled, is available for working in the mills. There is shortage of space and the cost of land is very high in Mumbai, whereas it is available at Ahmedabad at a relatively low price. This is why investors have invested in Ahmedabad to set up cotton mills. Hydropower to run the industry is also readily available. Ahmedabad is very well linked by roads and railway lines, 
Hence, the mobility of labor and supply of raw materials to the cotton mills is very easy and cotton products of Ahmedabad mills have a ready foreign as well as domestic market. Raw material for the cotton textile mills is very easy available because Ahmedabad is situated in the cotton producing belt. All these factors which are responsible for favoring the growth and development of industries have made Ahmedabad the premier industrial cluster with a large number of chemical industries and textile mills machinery industry. Ahmedabad has weaving mills, spinning mills and composite mills. Ahmedabad has more than 69 mills. Textile industry is divided on the basis of raw materials used as A. Cotton B. Woolen C. Silk D. Jute E. The artificial silk and rayon industry Cotton industry, Osaka, Japan Japan is located in the eastern hemisphere and is an exception in many ways. This small island country has proved without doubt that limitations of natural resources can be overcome by commitment. Japan was totally ruined after the Second World War. The economy of Japan was devastated and the country did not have enough raw materials. Neither iron ore nor cotton was available. Yet iron and steel and cotton textile industries are the finest in the world today. More than 60% of the people of Japan are engaged in industries and Japan has really worked well to earn a good name in international market. Osaka is the leading center of cotton textile industry. It has a large number of spinning and weaving mills. The yarn is spun in the spinning mills and the cloth is manufactured in the weaving mills. Osaka is a big industrial town on Japan's biggest island, Honshu. It is a port and a coastal town. These advantages have helped it become an industrial center. Japan has a warm and humid climate which is suitable for spinning and weaving. Osaka is located on the sea coast, so along with suitable climate, transportation is also well developed and Osaka is linked to the world for the import of raw materials and export of finished goods. Most parts of Japan are mountainous in nature. There is ample hydroelectric power available for running the mills. Some thermal power is also generated by coal from Kyushu and Hokkaido. River Yodo supplies enough water for use in the cotton mills. Osaka is situated on a flat stretch of land. Therefore, there is enough land to set up mills and the transport system is well developed. Asian and African countries provide a ready market for the cotton products of Japan. The quality of cloth manufactured in Japan is very high and therefore it is available to stand stiff competition from China and India. Japan has evolved an efficient management system to run the industry. Cotton industry of Osaka is largely export oriented and produces quality cloth at a low price. The Japanese government's policies are also in line with the development of industry. Most of the cloth produced is exported. Osaka produces such fine fabric that it has earned the name Manchester of Japan. Comparison of Information and Technology Industry in India and USA Modern age is the age of communication. Various modern means of communication have revolutionized the entire world. This revolution is reflected in social, political and economic environment world over. In fact, these changes have minimized distances to such an extent that the whole world now appears as a global village. Nowadays, radio, television, telephone, telegraph, fax and computers connect people in different parts of the world. This has made our life much comfortable. It is a combination of unique thoughts and futuristic vision which an average person has at the press of the button. Information technology includes the processing, storing and transferring of information in a digital form. It includes developing computer software, hardware, disks and different telecommunication systems that help in saving information. In the earlier days, a great deal of labor time, space and energy 
was needed to process, save and store information, but today everything can be done very quickly and efficiently on computers. This has been possible because of the development in the IT sector. Software engineers trained in computers and related fields can evolve methods and techniques to manage projects in a unique manner. Over the last 3 to 4 decades, the whole world has come to realize the importance of IT. Bengaluru, India. It is the capital city of Karnataka, which is one of the largest cities of the country. After independence, it has emerged as a major transportation and manufacturing center with industries producing communication equipment, machine tools, aircrafts, electric motors, textile, footwear and watches. Bengaluru is the base of India's space program as well. The electronics industry of India developed after independence. To develop broadcasting and telecommunication, the government of India set up the Indian telephone industry near Bengaluru in 1950. At present, this industry has diversified its production range to meet the needs of railways, defence and post and telegraph department. This range includes automatic telephone switching system, teleprinter, long-distance transmission systems, etc. Bharat Electronics Limited is another government undertaking set up at Bengaluru in 1956. It meets the electronics need of the Defence Services, All India Radio and Meteorological Department. At present, the industry produces audio and studio equipments, radars and communication equipment. Bengaluru is indeed the electronics capital of the country. During the last two decades, many private companies under private sector have been established. Bengaluru earned a worldwide name because of the development of software industry. Since the late 1970s, it has been developing as a major computer software production centre. Till date, Bengaluru has seen a tremendous growth in the field of information technology. In 1991, a software technology park was set up in Bengaluru. By 1998, there were 253 IT companies. Recently, the Indian Institute of Information Technology has been set up in Bengaluru. By 2000, the number of IT companies went up to 782. Now, several multinational companies have set up their offices at Bengaluru. It has earned the reputation of being the Silicon Valley of India or the IT capital of India. Bengaluru has certain specific advantages for the development of information and technology. The climate of Bengaluru is very conducive for work. It is neither very cold nor very hot. It is pleasant throughout the year. The mild conditions make working conditions very attractive. Karnataka has a large number of educational institutions. The academic environment around Bengaluru is highly conducive to technical education. There are a large number of excellent schools and engineering colleges. There are a large number of training centres too. Bengaluru has been attracting a lot of foreign and domestic IT firms, which open their centres too. Software parks encourage people to work with the latest techniques and gadgets. Foreign firms like GE, IBM, Intel, Motorola and Sun have set up their development centres here. Indian companies have established their centres in Bengaluru and are providing stiff competition to foreign firms. IT giants like Infosys, Tata Consultancy Services, TCS and Wipro have employed highly trained people to work on projects for the domestic and foreign markets. Lately, many US and European firms have accepted Indian talent and are outsourcing work to Indian firms that are mostly centred in Bengaluru. This has rightly earned it the name Silicon Valley of India. Bengaluru also has a highly skillful and educated labour force, readily available to work in the IT industries. Bengaluru had relatively low rents due to which cost of living was not high. Industrial growth has made Bengaluru expensive. All these factors have made Bengaluru a prominent centre for software industry. The foreign clients of Indian software firms are becoming more and more confident about their ability and quality. For Indians, it is a matter of pride 
and their capabilities are recognized the world over. Bengaluru has gained international recognition in the field of software technology. Silicon Valley, USA. Silicon Valley in the southern part of the San Francisco Bay Area in the North California in the United States. The term originally referred to the region's large number of silicon chip innovators and manufacturers but eventually came to refer to high-tech businesses in the area. The valley stretches over 40 kilometers and includes 13 cities. Once this valley was a rich farmland filled with orchards, today it is known for technology development. Here, the electronics industry developed during the Second World War period. Despite growth in the technology sector throughout the nation, Silicon Valley continues to be the high-tech hub because of its large number of engineers and venture capitalists. Following factors have helped it in the development of information and technology. Its Mediterranean type of climate has attracted a large number of people. Lots of activities and developments have transformed. California into one of the most technically advanced states of USA. Santa Clara Valley is best known for its headquarters or hub of such firms as Hewlett Packard, Intel and Lockheed Aerospace. In addition to computers, companies in this region produce peripheral equipments like disks, tape drives, circuits or chips, radar, microwave, etc. Stanford Industrial Park was set up near the Stanford University, which is a high-technology center. IBM, NASA, Xerox, etc. also started their research departments in the Silicon Valley. Nowadays, there is a shift in the industrial research activities in the valley from supercomputers to personal computers. There is further development of software and internet. Network-based information has now revolutionized the world. There is availability of skilled labor and enough capital to be invested. Power supply is readily available to run industries. Rich entrepreneurs continue coming to the valley to set up new companies. The employees and skilled workers also move accordingly. This has a great economic importance in the advancement of the country. These factors made Silicon Valley a center of world fame in computers and electronics industry. The inflow of skilled and paid employees to the valley over the last two decades raised housing policies and labor costs dramatically. To take advantage of lower cost labor and housing facilities elsewhere, many Silicon Valley based firms shifted production to South California, especially the San Diego area. Although decentralization of production proceeded, Yet the Silicon Valley has matured into an elite residential and control center of information technology. Presently, more and more American companies are outsourcing work to India, particularly to Bengaluru, Mumbai and Delhi to take advantage of the comparatively low remuneration level in India and thus making more profit. There are many Chinese and Indian engineers already stationed in the Silicon Valley at Santa Clara and San Jose near San Francisco, who are engaged in the software development. The intelligence and diligence of the Indian and Chinese IT experts is recognized in the West. Companies such as IBM, Microsoft, Intel, etc. have set up centers in Bengaluru and other metropolitan cities of India. It is much cheaper for these companies to operate from India. In turn, they are helping the Indian companies. Now, we can say that India is at the threshold of an IT revolution. India enjoys an abundance of raw materials of iron and steel industry and skilled personnel for IT industry.